All right. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're tuning in from the world. Welcome to Whitewater Lasers, aka Enhancing Your Body Position with Lauren McGaw. My name is Melissa DeMarie and I will be your host for today. I am the founder of California Water Sport Collective, Cali Collective for short. We do kayaking classes and trips for pretty much everybody. So as soon as we can get back on the water, um, come look us up. Uh, we do have a really strong program for women. Uh, we also do teens, kids, and all genders. So um, as soon as we can get out of shelter in place and quarantine, we are going to be back in action. We are hoping for the start of June, um, but uh, stay tuned. We'll figure it out. All right. I would love to welcome Lauren back to our show. Lauren, this is her second time here, and we're super stoked to have her. Hey, Lauren, how's it going? It's going all right. Can you, yep, you can hear me, which I think is like actually the new thing that you have to say all the time during quarantine is on Zoom, trying to figure out whether or not people can hear you or not, right? <laughs> I think so. Um, so Lauren, well, um, maybe just to give people like a quick little one-two punch about your, your whitewater background, your teaching background, just for those that don't know you quite as well, and then go ahead and just roll right into your talk today. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Melissa, for letting me do this. Um, I'm originally from Arizona, ended up in Idaho, whitewater kayaking on the Payette, which is where I learned to paddle and being there around so many amazing paddlers and so many incredible instructors really like pushed me to push myself. Um, I, at some point I started instructing and eight years later, it's probably one of my all time favorite things to do. And I really like to think of ways that, um, to explain things in a different way, because, well, if you can hear it in a different way, maybe it will make sense to you. Um, and right now I've just moved to Benjamin, Washington. So I'm living in the gorge. So pretty happy with that. And I've paddled all over, even spent some time in California when I was at school at Stanford, which is how I met Melissa. So it's pretty amazing how many people and how many different backgrounds can come together um, in whitewater. So today, what we're gonna be talking about is what we're going to, like the official title here is whitewater lasers. But understand that today we're going to use a term called titty lasers. And if anyone has a problem with that, I'm sorry. I'm not entirely like totally sorry about this, but um, partly it's because it's so evocative and it's really easy to remember. Um, and mostly what we'll be talking about is how to essentially use torso rotation as a way to paddle efficiently and have the greatest effect on our kayak because we don't want to work that hard when we go out on the river. We want to be able to make adjustments in the most efficient way possible so that we can paddle through the whole run so that we're not feeling like we have to, you know, take step backs or, oh, I'm tired or anything like that. So what we're going to be talking today about is titty lasers. And to help me out with that, uh, I, I made this fantastic little um, kayaker um, so that I could properly show you guys torso rotation and you can see the difference between the front and the back. Um, it is a slicey boat. Um, and I apologize if any cats show up, it's, uh, I have no control over them. Um, so we're, we're going to be kind of looking at titty lasers and Oh, the reason why I use the term titty lasers is a lot of people will say things like turn your shoulders downstream, but then you do the thing where like you turn just your shoulders downstream, but your chest is still pointed this way, or you turn your, or you like, you know, they tell you to point downstream, but then you're pointing and now your chest really the other way. And, and the reason why people are telling you to do that is because your upper body and your lower body aren't like fused right? Like there's the upper part of your body and there's the lower part of your body. And they rotate relative to each other, kind of like at your belly button, right? So if you're, if you're sitting up with good posture, your shoulders are back, your head's up, and you can really turn side to side, kind of rotating, that allows you to have a lot of power because it engages your core. 
So I don't want you to think about like doing this. It's really like I'm turning my rib cage. And what I discovered is that if I stay, instead of turning your shoulders, I say, point your tits where you want to go, right? It's a really visceral image and it's something that's going to actually kind of pop up into your brain being like, oh, right, I've got to turn my tits. Also, it's really fun to yell at people across the river. If you don't have tits, it's okay. Just, it's your pec muscles, okay? They're your pec blazers. Um, so what I mean when I say that is if this... is downstream, right, this is the river. If this is downstream, so going towards you is downstream, and we have little kayaker here, right, with the paddle and everything, right, they're going to you, instead of pointing sideways and just sort of like awkwardly putting their arms over there, instead what they're gonna do is they're gonna turn their tits, and you can kind of see them here, to point down where they want to go and then their boat's going to come around underneath them and and the reason for this is because your boat will naturally edge it under where your chest is so like if you lean just straight forward that's that's fine that's like a safe spot but it's not helping you prepare to where you want to go right you're not going here i'm going downstream so that's why when i say titty lasers, I mean that you're going to turn your tits to point down current because what it's doing is it's not only stabilizing your boat and helping it be like flat relative to the surface that it's on, not flat relative to gravity, flat relative to the surface that it's on, but on top of that, what it does is it means that the stroke that is going to keep your boat happy, so it's going to be upright, it's going to be doing good things, is the thing that comes up because what's in front of you is more likely to be the stroke that you're gonna take. And if you take upstream strokes, they're great if you're doing them for an effect. There's, a, there's an intention that you're putting them in the water. So one of the great things about doing something like turning your tits downstream is that it sets you up by getting forward, right? Because you're not gonna set them up going upstream, right? They're going downstream. But on top of that, it means that the strokes that are available to you to correct the inevitable spin, um, because as we know, spinning out is kind of what causes us to go upside down, whether it's you know your, your stern catches and then you're doing a spin this way, or you know, you're, 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 you're going from going downstream like this to all of a sudden you're spinning out and now you're getting into the hole or whatever, spinning out and no longer being in control is one of the reasons why you run into issues. So you want to make the corrections and the best corrections that are actually going to help out your kayaking be the first thing that comes up. So by turning your tits downstream, pointing them down current, it means that if my, and I'm going do 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 do, if my boat spins out, I can put my paddle in the water and I can say do a reverse bow rudder and boom, now I'm back in stream and I can go back to paddling along. Sorry, my little kayaker doesn't have very good forward paddle technique. The arms are a little bit stiff. Um, or, you know, if your chest is pointed downstream, your titty laser is pointed downstream, you could even take a stroke here that's allowing you to push your paddle underneath you. But no matter what, you can see how that chest is always, those tits are always pointed down current. Because what I'm doing is I'm either bringing my boat back underneath me, and the same works if you're wanting to increase the angle, right? You can also push it away from your chest, but your chest is still pointed downstream. And, and the reason this becomes something that's actually important is as we know with spin, um, you can either add spin or subtract spin. Can you guys all see this? Can you see this, Tammy? Okay. So if your boat is any, because sometimes you want to add spin, right? You don't want to be pointed straight downstream. You want to be turned over this way. And so when you add spin, right, you can do that so long as you're to have the most stable. Now, granted, you can, you can, 
get off of this principle if you're doing it for an effect. But as sort of like a basis, right, you can take a stroke and you can add spin with a sweep stroke, or you can subtract spin with something like the bow rudder, where I have turned my chest, I have turned my head, and I'm putting my paddle blade in and I'm bringing my boat back underneath me. And the reason that this is an interesting idea to have is to realize that by having your go-to default be having your chest pointed down current, it means that the stroke that's gonna come up, the stroke that is gonna be the most effective is right underneath you and is continuing to encourage your boat to be happy and upright. You don't want your rescue default stroke being something that's gonna not make your boat happy, which is gonna further the problem that you're on. And the other thing is that you wanna figure out how to develop your default stroke into something or your, your default body position as being something that is productive and proactive instead of reactive, right? So if my, if, if my, my go-to is I flipped over, I rolled up, and the first thing I do is I get up forward and I point my tits downstream, now I've got my boat to being balanced, right? And on top of that, I'm also in a position where I'm looking downstream and I am also set up to take the strokes necessary to get whatever I need to get done, done. Does that, sorry, I'm used to the circadian present. So, you know, if that makes some sense. There's some really cool effective aspects of this too especially with things like the bow draw or the rudder, any of the rotational strokes we have. Uh, I'm gonna open this up just a little bit so that my head's not entirely cut off. So you look at something like this, the places that I can take the most effective strokes in my kayak, we call this the arc of rotation, is out here. Um, Essentially, the easiest way to find this is if you sit in your kayak and you turn your, your, turn your tits to point sideways and you put your paddle in the water and then you go forward and then you go all the way back, that's gonna help you find where that arc of rotation is. And the reason, and it's, and it's not this, Tammy, it's I'm turning my chest and I'm thinking about what's directly in front of me. Yeah, there you go. And and the and I usually do it like feathering or sculling when I do it, just so I can get a sense. But the reason why this is important is if I take a paddle stroke right here, like next to my boat, my arc of rotation is really tiny. My stroke's not going to be very effective. Whereas if I'm taking that same rotational stroke out here on the arc of rotation, not only will I have consistency, but I'm also going to be in a position where I can have the most effect on my kayak. Um, if you get, you know, granted, everyone's going to have a different arc of rotation, depending on what your boat is and your flexibility and things like that. But by being in a position where your paddle is always in front of your body and you're getting that rotation, not by doing weird, awkward things with your arm where you're putting it out back here and putting it in jeopardy, but instead you're keeping it in line and in front of you, and you're getting that rotation that you need by planting your, by, by rotating your chest, by pointing your titty lasers to where you want to go. And then what you're doing is you're bringing the boat underneath you. So I may give an example because I realize that probably seemed a little bit complicated. So essentially, if you're coming downstream and your boat starts rotating, right? And I am, what I do is I turn my titty lasers downstream. I have turned my chest. I have turned my eyes. I plant my paddle blade. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing that boat back underneath me. Now, granted, I could do the opposite. I could be pointed downstream and want to increase my angle 
And by doing so, what I'm doing is I am pu pushing my boat away from my chest. So I'm bringing my boat under my chest or away from my chest. And part of the reason why this works is because the physics of a paddle blade and the physics of kayaking in general. Um, you guys can do the little hand raise or say yes if you guys can do this. When you kayak, is your paddle stationary? Like, are you pulling your paddle through the water or are you planting your paddle and you're moving your boat past your paddle? Think about it for a second. I can't hear you, Tammy. Sorry. Let's see if I can. I don't know how to unmute you. I think I unmuted myself. Oh, there you go. So what you're not saying you don't want to sweep all the way around because you then you'll turn your seat. So you want to only go about halfway to your butt your head. I what I'm saying is, is that where your kitty lasers are pointed, you put your paddle on the arc and you bring the boat underneath you. So if I only have a slight bit of rotation in my kayak that I'm correcting for, I don't need to go all the way back here. I'm just gonna plop it in here and it's a little tiny little putter stroke. Does that make sense? Like it doesn't need to be big, it just needs to be on the arc. And the big aspect here is that I'm turning my chest, I'm turning my tits down current to where I wanna be. I'm putting the paddle in the water and I'm bringing the boat back underneath me. The same thing works with something like a bow draw, right? Like, sorry, horrible wire arms. Um, you know, in, in this case, what I'd be doing is I'm hurting the chest, putting the paddle in the water, and I am bringing the boat still underneath me. So it's not a case of me ever getting into a position where I'm back here. That would be me not paying attention to what my personal flexibility is. Instead, if like say I'm my, my goal down currents that way, what I'm doing is I'm turning my titty lasers this way, and you see how I can still do this? That's the point here is that I'm never getting, by, by turning my torso, the rotation isn't happening in my shoulders. The rotation's happening in my core. I've got like 36 muscles in my core. Shoulders and chicken wing arms in general aren't as strong and aren't as durable. So if I can use more of my core, that's more powerful. And the other aspect is that if I'm using that differential from my upper body, and my lower body, what I'm really being able to do, um, all right, I will get to that in a second. Ideally, what I'm able to do is then I'm able to use my legs. So that's where people will like, you know, they'll kick their boat underneath them, or they'll really use their knees to pull the boat back underneath them. Because as we were talking about earlier, and this is sort of the question that I was asking everyone, um, is based off the paddle, whether or not you're pulling the paddle through the water, or if you're planting the paddle and your boat's actually moving past it. Um, so, as some of you guys noted, how it actually works is your paddle becomes stationary. And this is something that I'll be covering more in my next lecture, but essentially an eddy forms behind your paddle blade. And so your paddle becomes stationary. And if that's the case, your boat's actually the thing that's moving, not your paddle. So by turning your chest, right, by turning your titty lasers and pointing them to where you wanna go, and by planting your paddle blade, you can then bring the boat underneath you. Or, sorry, very awkward Barbie doll moment. Or if say you're going here and you're going for a bow draw because you're sideways, you've turned your chest, your chest is still pointed, your tits are still pointed downstream. And what you're doing is you're actually bringing the boat underneath you. You can see like, the paddle's not moving, hold on. It's hard to do this on a video conference. Okay, so the paddle blade's not moving, 
What I'm doing instead is my chest is pointed one way and I'm bringing the boat underneath me and continuing on downstream. Right, and so I think that's the, the big aspect here is realizing that the, it's the difference between your lower body, there are legs in here actually, right? Like in your boat, there are legs. They, they didn't just die just because you can't see them and they're, they're in a giant piece of plastic. So when you're paddling, you have to utilize that differential and set yourself up for success with that differential. Because if I did it the other direction, now I'm fighting against the current when I'm trying to pull my boat underneath me. That doesn't make any sense. So instead, you want to use as many aspects as you can because you're never really going to beat the river. So you've got to utilize it. And so in this case, by setting myself up, by setting my upper body, pointed down current, then the strokes that are going to allow me to have the most effect on my kayak are also the first things that are going to come up because they're right in front of me. Okay. And this works in something like a, like an eddy too. So if we have a rock, and we have a fun little eddy line coming out here, right? This is, this is shore. Is that visible? When you cross the eddy line, my up current has changed, right? If I'm here, down current is this direction. So my titty lasers are pointed here. And as I cross this current, now my titty lasers are pointed up current, which in this case is now upstream. So pointed away from you. And that's why the emphasis is on current and not on upstream downstream. And as you become more proficient in reading water and understanding how to place your paddle or your boat into like a very specific spot then what happens is you start noticing more and more little microcurrents and or you notice like okay i'm gonna have a couple shifts here and you're making the active decision of okay i am not rapidly turning my chest three or four times or i'm pre-turning for this next move because then the current's going to be here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a stroke and i'm going to pop that pop that boat underneath me so that my chest, my tits are now down current in what I'm landing in. Um, the, I guess the, the, the point there is that it can become more nuanced as you go through the process of integrating it into your kayaking. The, the big thing that I would suggest is when you guys get the chance to go kayaking again, do some interesting drills. And so the one that I really like, um, that kind of really brings this home a little bit, is if you're going through a chill little rapid, what you're gonna do is you're just going to turn your titty lasers pointed down current. So you're gonna come into the rapid, you can get like two strokes at the top if you want. And then what I want you to do is turn your titty lasers pointed down current and your job is to keep spinning your kayak, but only taking strokes where your titty lasers are pointed down current. So if you're at the top of the, or you're at the top, right, your first stroke might be like, oh, I'm gonna do a sweep stroke, but then you're gonna kind of come around. And so now I've got to turn my chest all the way around. And then here I might do a bow draw and then a rudder. And the main goal here in a bow draw is that I keep my chest dynamically pointed down current and I'm getting used to the idea of I'm spinning my boat around. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite do it because the model is not doing a great job at the moment. But, you know, what can we ask for a piece of beer can inside of a kayak with a makeup sponge for a head. 
and there's only so much. Um, by by doing that, by by giving that your practice, what you're setting yourself up with is for ways to deal with the spin because there's multiple ways to deal with the spin. You can you can stop the spin, you can go with the spin, you can encourage the spin, you can flip the spin around, and so. The point here is that by working on drills where you're going and you're putting your position where, okay, I'm now pointed upstream and you figure out, is it easier to keep going, my boat going around or, and what I'm wanting to do is bring the boat underneath me or stop the spin. Personally, I'm a huge fan of stopping the spin when I can. Um, and and the reason for that is because i don't want to work that hard and there's there's times where like yes if i'm pointed you know mostly upstream i might go with the spin but if i'm dealing with little tiny bits of spin here and here rather than adding an additional spin i might just pop in like a little like poop stroke to bring that boat back underneath my chest um because for those of you who are potentially in my last lecture we talked a little bit about getting like up and above in that kind of Beyonce position, which is where things are nice and stable, but things aren't usually there. Luckily, Beyonce does have titty lasers. It's not just Madonna and Shakira and I guess Shakira didn't. That was Katy Perry. Um, the, the point here being that you can be up and forward and you can make these little tiny micro adjustments and the way that you can really know that you're making those micro adjustments is by turning your chest and being like, oh, my boat's coming a little bit offline. Um, so the, the big aspects here that I'm just gonna remind everyone of before I open this up for questions is you're, you're pointing your tits down current and that allows you to take the most effective strokes Remembering that you want to stay within that, you want to aim for that arc of rotation because that's where you're, you're going to have the most effect and that arc of rotation kind of comes up with what's down current of you. And that down current changes if you remember where the eddy is because over here, my down current is now upstream. The other thing that I would say is, you know, for those of you who know a rapid like, um, what is that thing on the gorge? Anyways, if you have a rapid that makes a, a big transition from one current to the next, um, it allows you to do some interesting things. Like if you have like a hole here, and a hole here, see if you guys can see this. And you've got current that's doing kind of one of these numbers, right? You can come in here. And then what I'm doing is I'm actually turning my chest here, which sets me up for this. And then my chest here, which sets me up for this because it allows me to have the natural thing coming up being the stroke or action or edging that is going to make my boat happiest and most stable. So I'm gonna open up these for questions um, because I'm sure there are probably a lot of them, maybe. Um, and I'll happily walk you guys through them. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lauren, that was rad. I know I'm like, <laughs> I love this. I'm so getting my like Lauren fix and my Sammy fix and my Darcy fix. And these have been really super fun. Um, so Tammy is going to open the floor with a question. So Tammy, you are unmuted. Go for it. Okay, great. I hope so. Shit will happen. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, are you guys seeing me already? Because I just yes. left some yep. okay, I just left some place. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm not in my thing anymore. Okay, well, I'll just ask you. Um, when so when we do change rotate our whole body uh, is, i mean is our boat automatically going to go that route yeah i mean I you're essentially setting yourself boat. huh 
even if you didn't have your paddle in the water and you turn, will it automatically start to turn? Yeah, essentially the way that you can think about this is that you have a skeleton. So there's, there's certain biomechanical things that we can do that, it, that, you know, if I turn my chest, I'm engaging my hip and I'm engaging my knee. And like, I could actively think of like, no, I don't wanna engage these things. But if I turn my chest, and, and here's a really important thing, Tammy, because I keep seeing you do this. That's not what I'm talking about. Like keeping your arms in front of your, nope. Do this with me right now. Arms in front of my body. My, my elbows are not here. My elbows are in front of me. Arms in front of my body, right? And what I want you to do is I want you to turn your tits. Yep, turning your tits. Do you feel that difference? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. So you don't want your arm to not be pointed towards where your titty lasers are. Like you really want to imagine that there are lasers shooting out of your tits when it's where you want to go. It makes a lot of sense. Makes good okay. sense. So. To, to answer your question about turning, the cool thing that happens is if you point your tits where you want to go, those titty lasers are pointing where you want to go, it automatically engages your hip, it automatically engages your knee, it automatically engages your butt cheek. And so what it does is it keeps your belt flat relative to the current that you're in. And because you're set up here, okay, my boat's going to start carving super slowly, but I could make decisions like I want to add in more edge in which case I can increase the turn or you know what oh gosh I'm right here here's my bow draw or oh I'm right here I can use that rudder and pivot my boat underneath me does that make sense yeah yeah a lot of sense a lot a lot the, the general idea here with titty lasers in general is that you are setting yourself up for success by having your tits pointed down current, you are providing yourself so that the options that are going to make your boat the most stable are what's naturally gonna come up. Even if you're in a situation where you're like, oh my God, my hair is on fire. If you point your tits downstream, even if your hair's on fire, what's gonna come up is less likely to be something that's going to cause you to have like a serious problem, like being upside down. Well, I guess that would put your hair no longer on fire, but you know, <laughs> so it goes. Okay, great. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. Thanks, Tammy. You're welcome. All right. Um, Emma Johnson, you are next. There you go. Awesome. Hey, Lauren. Um, I was just curious. I've always heard, look where you want to go. And I'm wondering if you could talk about your head in relation to your tits. Like, can yeah. your head like look around and your tits be moving where you want to go? Or does it need to be connected? So there's this this kind of goes back to a little bit of like you've got some biomechanical things where the reason we tell people to that their eyes are their strongest muscle is that our head is kind of attached to everything it's at the top it's this huge lever arm so if i look down i'm gonna end up pulling my whole spine down and it's gonna kind of like bring me in whereas if i look up and where i want to go it brings everything up so yeah if i look to where i want to go it makes it a whole lot easier to bring my my tits underneath me but part of this is that like, yes, this is like by far the more powerful position. But sometimes like my tits might be pointed here, but I'm looking at some feature that I have to go to downstream where I'm looking at someone like I'm not locked into like, this is not solid. I'm not a robot, right? I can still <laughs> have my tits pointed one way and be looking at someone this way or be looking over here. Like your, your head is still mobile. Um, the, the, granted your eyes are still your strongest muscle. And so if you look where you want to go and then you put your tits where you want to go, now you have the option to make your boat where you want to go, right? Like that's, that's sort of how they all interact with each other. Um, the big thing that I see is if I just tell someone to turn their, like, you know, look where you want to go, you get a lot of this, right? There's still, there's, you're, you're still paddling but your chest isn't pointed where do you want it to go. And so you haven't created that differential 
between your upper body and your lower body. And, and, and that's one of the key points here is that like where your upper body is pointed is not necessarily where your lower body is pointed, right? Like I can be paddling along, this is downstream, just to be clear. And like, I can be paddling along, my chest can be torqued, like even slightly, my boat can be going one way. And then what I'm doing is I'm putting my paddle in, whatever stroke I happen to decide, and I'm bringing my boat underneath me, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that like, I'm set in having my eye, sorry, I got distracted. I got tangled in that one. Um, it, it doesn't mean that I have, okay, so, sorry, let me back, I got totally tangled there. So if I'm here, what I'm then doing is I'm bringing my bottom half of my body underneath me, right? Like my upper body and my lower body, they're not locked in. So in general, I'm not a giant block. There's like different, there's different pieces, right? Like I've got my lower body and that can be pointed in a different way than my upper body. But I can use that differential between my upper body and where my lower body is as a big lever. Does that make some sense? Yeah, definitely. Um, sort of a related question. I listened to your Beyonce uh, lecture, which was yeah. great. And I'm wondering if you're thinking also about your tits, like pointing forward in like an open kind of mm -hmm. aggressive stance or is that Have not you, part yeah, of it? Yeah, no, exactly. Like if you've seen the show Marvis, Marvelous Miss Maisel, um, <laughs> it's hilarious. Anyways, the, the thing that this female comedian does when she's going up at stage, her, her thing that she says is tits up, right? And, and the point being there that if I am in with that more upper carriage, right, that also allows my rib cage to turn more because that's where I'm really getting that differential between my upper body and my lower body. If I use just my arms to rotate, that's putting an incredible amount of pressure on my shoulders because then I'm making my rotation off of my shoulders instead of off of my chest, right? Like my rib cage is a significantly more stable and powerful thing to use, right? Because then I'm using my rib cage and then I'm using like my hips. And those two things are kind of the two parts that are pivoting rather than thinking of using like my little scrawny chicken arms. Does that, does that make some sense? Yeah. So, going back to that whole Beyonce thing, like if I'm sitting low and I'm asking my folks questions, like that's not a good thing. So Beyonce and titty lasers kind of go together in that if you point your tits down at the spray skirt of your boat, that's where you're telling your boat you want to go. If instead you're sitting up and you're pointing your tits to where you want to go, well, now you're automatically kind of reminding yourself to pull your carriage up and paddle in a more like ownership of your kayak badass kind of way. Okay, so hope that answered that. Yeah, thank you. Um, perfect. Awesome. Thanks so much, Emma. Um, I, you know, I love the concept because if you're, it doesn't matter what gender you are, we all have titties. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, and I love it because it works with everybody, you know, because it gets everyone moving. And at the end of the day, it just kind of puts a little smile on your face, too, because it doesn't matter who you are. You know, we can't take ourselves so seriously. And, you know, we use chest and torso and all these other things. But I have found, as probably you have a million times, if you can make somebody smile or laugh, even by saying something silly like titty lasers, it sticks, you know, so. Yeah. And I think it also, there's, there's something truly fun about being able to shout that at someone mm -hmm. and it really has to click. It, it, it clicks because it's something that's, you know, evocative enough that if you yell it at someone, one, they're going to de-stress a little bit because they're probably going to giggle to themselves a little bit, but also it's, oh, you, it's you're 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 talking about a terminology for a principle that does multiple things at once it's not just I'm turning my torso it's I'm lifting up I'm thinking about being big and I'm using a more dynamic stroke so 
Fabulous. Sweet. Cool. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions, I think um, maybe Lauren, if you got just a few things to close up your, your yeah, lecture with. I would say going out and working on some drills with this and playing around with it. You can do it on flat water. You can do it on just about anything and kind of figuring out how to incorporate it into what you're doing. The, the way I like to think about instruction is it's like you get a big serving on your, your plate of learning of, you know, mashed potatoes or titty lasers. And right now you got to take like a little, a little tiny bite of it. And you go, oh, this is horrible, or hmm, that's kind of yummy. Your job is to now go and eat the pile of titty lasers, right? You gotta, you gotta go and eat that, and digest it, and figuring out how you want to incorporate it or not into your own kayaking. So going out and kind of practicing with that can be both a lot of fun, and it's sort of a way to make it a part of your kayaking if you so choose. So that would be my big takeaway for everyone awesome yeah and the nice thing is is that you can watch this video over and over because there were a lot of little fine points that came out today and that's what's been really fun especially with these technique based ones is yeah. you know in the beginning people are like oh I, I can't take notes that fast it's like you don't have to you can you can watch it again yeah and no, watch it's, it again it's pretty um, great Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. That was amazing. Um, at some point, I will get up to the gorge to see you. Please. It should have been happening. <laughs> um, so Tammy, um, just to answer your question, um, you'll get a link. So I, I know that you've been at a few webinars, but you'll get a link after words um, as soon as we get it uploaded to YouTube, which, you know, depending on Wi-Fi in the foothills, it could be a day, it could be three days, it could be five days, but we'll eventually get this um, video to you. And then if you have friends that missed it today or were out or couldn't make it, um, we're, we are offering all of the archives on our, in our, on our shop page. And so people can go on and for five bucks, you can get you can get pretty much it. You can get everything we've had up till this point. And I, what are we on? 15? Have we done 15 webinars so far? Wow. That's I know, amazing. right? I think we have eight more to go. So we're doing this until um, June 14th. And then we're going to reassess because fingers crossed we are back on the water. Um, it's looking promising. So yeah. So yeah. Got my gear shed all organized, all the boats are lined up. I counted all the life jackets. And um, so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're there, we're ready. We're just waiting for that phase three to happen in California. But um, anyways, yep. thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. And um, yeah, come back, see us again. Don't miss out on the last few webinars. I know it's it's funny because people are getting excited. And even if you don't, um, if you can't get there live and you sign up for something, you'll still get the link to access it later. And then, like I said, there we have our e-store. So if you go onto our homepage, you'll see a little thing that says shop and go ahead and pick something up. Um, but anyways, please feel free to reach out, chat with us, talk to us, say hi. Um, this has been super yeah. fun and tune in. We got, gosh, what do we have next up? We have Natalie Anderson, who is going to be doing fine tuning your role. Um, we have Marianne Setter talking about the sweet booth. Then we got a few family segments coming up and then um, Darcy's going to be back talking about her book, Amazon woman, which is going to be outstanding. Both of her talks have been awesome. So um, yeah. don't, don't miss out. Come and see us again, and then hopefully we'll see you on the water. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you soon. Bye, Tammy.